Welcome to Nightline, where we say there's always something cleaning the air. You're going to hear some good stuff tonight. You're going to be blessed. I am Mary Sloan, along with my daughter, Tony Suchka. And uh, we count it a privilege to come into your home every Thursday night. And if you don't know it, we come on every Thursday, don't we, Tony? We do. Not just uh, one Thursday a month, but every Thursday night. So if you're just watching for the first time tonight, just make sure you tell somebody about it and tune in again next week. We always say we got a great program because we always think we do, don't All we? Right. <laughs> <laughs> we got some great guests here tonight, and we'll be telling you a little bit more about them a little later. But uh, if uh, you don't know all the ways that you can watch tonight, of course, there's good old-fashioned TV, and, and that's the way I watch it at home. But if uh, you're out of state or know people that are out of state, they can join us on Facebook tonight and uh, get, a, get it live right there streaming. And if it should ever go off Facebook, you can always go to WGGS16.com and get it the live feed there. you can there. actually go there and... It can remind you each week right, right. that it's it comes up on. on mine every every week. And yeah. then we always love to tell you to encourage you to share the program yes. on your page. Our page is Nightline Live with Mary and Tony, and you can catch it live there or on WGGS 16. But the more that people share the program, yes. then the more that the gospel is reached to many, many people. And you know what's funny, Tony? For a long time, I would bring it up, but I thought it shared automatically. <laughs> We're not as smart as these younger kids. I, I kept heard. telling you, why are you not sharing the program <laughs> on your own page? Yeah, you got to hit the share button. Even though it's on your page, you still have to hit the share button, That's don't right. you? <laughs> but I heard a, a minister not long ago uh, trying to tell people how to get on Facebook, Periscope, and he said, and if you don't know how, just ask your eight-year-old grandchild or your right. or your son. They'll tell you. But th these kids are a lot smarter than I am. Well, and my kids are smarter <laughs> than me. They'll tell me my phone <laughs> does things I had no clue it did. <laughs> I know. And I want us to also remind you that we have prayer partners back there, and we love our prayer partners. We always like to give them a good hand. Yes, yes love them so much. They come here every week and uh, just give up their time, and we appreciate it so much. And, uh, Tony, we got a scripture tonight, or you have something else you want to share about the guest or go into the scripture? Well, I'll share the scripture. Our topic is dealing with youth tonight. Mm -hmm. um, both of our guests, that's kind of what their passion is, is to really right. pour into youth and help them just grow up to be strong men and women of Christ. Right. So our scripture I'm going to read from the message, and it is 1 Timothy 4, 11 through 14. And it says, Get the word out. Teach all these things. And don't let anyone put you down because you're young. Teach believers with your life by word, by demeanor, by love, by faith, and by integrity. Stay at your post reading scripture, giving counsel and teaching. And that special gift of ministry you were given when the leaders of the church laid hands on you and prayed. Keep that dusted off and in use. So this is just uh, something I'd love to just decree over our youth yes. tonight. And it says, um, don't let anyone put you down because you're young. <laughs> and I was reading about that. And it's because, you know, yeah. keep um, a reputation that someone would want to follow, right. you know, and and know that you're following what the Lord has called you to do. Yes. So I thought that was a you good know, scripture. And you know, I was talking to my daughter, Dana, today, Tony's sister, and uh, she lives in Mississippi. We say she's from here and she's coming back she one day. She is from here, <laughs> but she lives in Mississippi. And, uh, you know, she, she brought out something that, that I just loved. Inheritance is what you give, but you leave a legacy. You know, inheritance is what we are, what we give, but what are we going to do with that? Are we going to leave a legacy? And our guests are going to be talking about that tonight. We have Greg Steer with us tonight, and uh, share a little bit about Greg Steer. Well, Greg works with youth, and we actually had him on last year, and he yes. shared oh, he an event awesome. that he had done for the first time called Dare to Share Live. Yes. And what it does is it encourages kids to all come together at one time right. all over the nation and allows other churches to participate in this event. And he's going to share more about that later in the yeah. show. And then I also wanted to share, you know, when Dana, she actually wrote a blog on that we 
um, what is it that she, inheritance it, is what you give inheritance is what you give and legacy is what you leave right and so the Lord had revealed to her some things about legacy and she shared it on her blog yes. and it's the dash silent silent not the word dash but the <laughs> dash walk dot org and I know when she was on with us earlier in the year mm -hmm. um, she shared her blog and she's had some people reach out to her and how that it's been a blessing and so mm -hmm. she always is full of revelation of what the Lord right. is doing and I just thought that was neat that she had actually written on legacy. I know. That was great, wasn't it? Yeah. And we have also with us tonight, and he's going to be singing throughout the program, mm -hmm. and also at our 9 o'clock hour he will be on, Marcel Anderson. And I'm telling you, he has a ministry called Accelerating Men. And his testimony is going to be hard to listen to. I'll just be up front with you and frank with you, but it needs to be heard. Yes. It's a harsh te uh, testimony of what happened to him, but actually what changed his life and made him a, a better person and a person that helps others that have gone through the same thing. But he is also going to be with us tonight. We're excited about and that. And he, I was going to share um, the name of his book. I have it written down here. Um, it's called Still Living. Mm. And that book is spawned from a song, I believe, that he wrote that he'll share about. But his testimony is incredible. Right. And, um, he I and definitely, his brothers are. <gasps> yes, you'll definitely need to stay tuned. He'll be in our 9 o'clock hour, but he's going to be sharing in song throughout the program. But we want you guys to stay tuned to hear his story as well right. because it is powerful. Yes, it is. And, you know, Tony, as, as I was looking at sort of what we were going to be bringing here tonight, um, you know, we can sit around and have a bunch of words that just bounce off the wall. and or, or we can say, Holy Spirit, just anoint me to bring just what you want me to bring. And that's what I always like to do. Um, I was just thinking about the uh, legacy and family. Um, I remember when your daddy and I first married in 1968. Um, for four years, you know, we would get together with his family. And there was nine siblings, and there was your grandma and grandpa still living then. And uh, we would, you know, we would have a great time. We would come together. We'd say a blessing over the food. And we'd eat. We'd share gifts and hug each other and say bye. But I remember one year when all that changed. It was about four years after your dad and I were married. Uh, we had uh, Mama Sloan, who was Daddy's uh, grandmother. grandmother. She came. And she was sitting and this over, was at Christmas time. Right, Christmas time. We had it all at our house that year. And Mama Sloan came that Christmas, and she was sitting over in a chair all to herself. And uh, we welcomed her and told her what, how good it was for her to be there. And then all of a sudden, Mama Sloan stands to her feet. <laughs> and when Mama Sloan gets up, everybody listens. And I will never, you know, forget that Christmas, how she stood to her feet. And she began to talk about the goodness of the Lord and praising and rejoicing and throwing her hands up. And, and, and you know, we, we knew all that. We did that at home, but we didn't come together like, you know, a lot of times we didn't come together at Christmas and do all this. But she changed our Christmas that year for the 40-something years. We, it never, we never got together what we did not get into prayer. And we began to show, pe show the, the ones there that they needed to testify. Did well, I remember <laughs> growing up, and I never knew any Christmas without, even though this isn't the Christmas season, we're talking about this, but right. I never knew. It's legacy. Right. I never <laughs> knew a Christmas that we didn't get together with the Sloan family and go around and share. And I remember mine and all my cousins, our stomach would hurt because we were going to have to talk and share our heart in front of everybody and you get all nervous. Uh -huh. But I'm so grateful that we went around and we had a time to where we were like, you share your heart. You share what you feel like the Lord's done for that, you that year or what you needed prayer for. Right. And then we all came together as a family. And, you know, Dad has six sisters, two brothers, so there was nine families. Mm -hmm. And each family was prayed over every year at Christmas. Yeah, it turned in the, uh, the top. It was a service. We'd have an hour-long service. Meeting. And even to this yeah, day. We still do it. You know, yeah. we, we meet every year. And as a family, we don't come together to just eat and open. Right. Get, it is a time at where we know we're going to worship. Right. We're going to get prayer if we need prayer. Right. And it's going to be an intimate healing, time. You better get in that chair because we're going to surround right. you.
you better get to the strong for Christmas. All of you. <laughs> uh, you know, we just take it to the highest degree there is. And we even started communion many years ago. We have communion every year. And, uh, you know, Tony's talking about getting nervous when it came time for her to give her testimony. Well, you know, we train our kids how to go to school mm -hmm. and how to make speeches and how to excel, but sometimes we don't train them in the ways of the Lord. We don't teach them the scriptures. We don't push them to, you know, to be there for that testimony that they need to come forth out of them. So uh, you may have gotten nervous, but it worked. Yeah, and you it? talked about planning that some people may say, well, yeah. planning something like that doesn't seem right. But you had said we plan everything else and mm -hmm. we stay busy. <clears throat> I know as a, a mom of young children, we stay busy with getting our kids from here to there and planning everything right. else. Yes. And what's most important when it's all left behind, it's not the soccer game and it's not, you know, the rehearsal to this or what it is, the relationship we have with one another right. and the relationship that we're growing with Christ. Amen. And you know, when I, I thought about Mama Sloan's testimony, I was reminded of this song. When I think about the Lord, how He saved me, how He raised me, how He filled me with the Holy Ghost, how He healed me to the uttermost. When I think about the Lord, how He picked me up, turned me around, He set my feet on solid ground. Guess what? She said, it makes me want to shout hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're worthy of all the praise. <laughs> hey, I didn't sing that, but I said the words. Anyway, I <laughs> love that song, and it reminded me of Mama Sloan that well, day. Well, she definitely imparted right. something into our family that I am so proud right. to be a part of and have a heritage. So we ask you tonight, what is it that you're yes. leaving, yes. you know, to your children and your grandchildren? What kind of Amen. legacy? And it's not too late to start. It's not too late to say, you know, I've not done this with my kids and they're grown with their own children. Make something different happen this year. And Choose a time to come together and just that's right. you know, and I'm pray just together. Of Psalms 127, 3 through 5, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. We need children who will carry on the legacy when we're gone, don't we? Absolutely. You know what? Let's, I want you to pray, Tony, if you, if, and just... You know, we're going to be going into some uh, other stuff and going to a song, but we just want to pray. And let's pray for the children, the legacy of our children out yes. there. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity you, that you give us to come together and to just share your gospel with yes, those that are Jesus, watching, the Jesus, viewers. Jesus. We thank you for the youth yes, that Lord. you've placed thank in you, front Jesus. of us to raise, Lord. You've get, you trusted us with children. And I just pray for everyone watching that yes, if there's youth Jesus. in their home you, that they need direction for, Lord, that you would just yes, speak to Jesus. them, give them wisdom as to how to raise their, their children or their grandchildren. And I just speak that you would open up their eyes to the legacy that you yes. want to leave to them. We thank you for it. We give you all Jesus. the glory and we just pray that you would bless this amen, program amen, tonight. Amen. And I pray that yes. each person that calls in for requests for prayer, that you would just meet thank them through God. those telephone lines with the prayer partners that we have. And we just want to celebrate in the victories that are called in as amen, well. In amen. Jesus name. Amen. We have a great program coming up and we've got our guests, Marcel Anderson and Greg Steer. And Marcel is going to sing, Let's Get Started. Have fun you do, y'all. Do it with all of your heart. Stop playing around for the Lord is coming back real soon. And he's waiting to see if you did the things he left for you to do. Oh, oh, I can't believe we are right here. We have to start just right now. God is waiting for us. There's no time to waste. Don't rush, don't be late. Let's get started now. Let's get started, y'all. Let's get started now. Listen. Knock, knock. Who's at the door? Oh, my. Come in so we can get started with the plans. 
purpose that God has given to us is time to get it done. Yeah. And what are you waiting for? Can you hear the sounds in the air, on the earth, everywhere? You better get your house in order now. Get up, get up now. Stop playing. Started yeah. now, now. Who's at the door? Oh, my, come in so we can get started with the plans that God has given to us. It's time to get it done. Yeah, yeah. Y'all put the fist in there like this. Tell me now, y'all ready? Let's go. Say, knock, knock. Who's at the door? Oh, my, come in. So we can get started with the plans that God has given to us. It's time to get it done. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I can't believe we are right here. We have to start this right now. God is waiting for us. There's no time to waste. Don't rush, don't be late. Let's get started now. Let's get started. Let's get started, y'all. Let's get started. Let's get started. Don't waste no more time. Let's get started now. Let's get started now. No more time to waste. Let's get started now. Yeah. Don't you rush. Don't be late. All you gotta do right now is participate, yeah, yeah. Everybody, let's get started now. Everybody, let's get started now. Everybody, let's get started now. Let's get started now. Help me sing that, y'all ready? Hey! Everybody, let's get started now. Everybody, let's get started now. Everybody, let's get started now. Let's get started now. Let's get started now. Let's, let's get started now. Let's, let's get started now, let's get started now mm, And don't be late Wow, what a great song, what a beautiful voice. We just love Marcel Very Anderson. Very talented. He is. You've known him from um, your church. Yeah, he came with his brother uh, and uh, was there on a Sunday morning. And I'm telling you, the anointing was so strong. You know, it's about the anointing, not just the pretty voices. That's right, that's right. Good. You can... Some people with the anointing, I always say, I've, I've heard people that have an anointing on their voice that could sing the phone book. That's right. And I would yes. be like, yes, Lord. <laughs> but yes, it definitely um, makes a difference when there's an anointing on the voice and on the yes, atmosphere. it does. Well, I wanted to tell you a little bit about our guest, Greg Steer from Dare to Share Ministries. Greg has a reputation for knowing and relating to today's teens in a unique and effective way. Because of his 25 plus years in youth ministry, Greg is widely viewed as an authority on teen issues and adolescent spirituality. Over the course of the last 20 years, Greg has spoken to over 1 million teens in major venues across the nation and heard countless stories of their struggles and triumphs. Living just minutes away from the scene of the 1999 Columbine High School shootings in the Denver area, the tragedy triggered a pivotal turning point in Greg's career. Following those events, he resigned as a pastor at the church in Arvada, Colorado to pursue Dare to Share full time. Since then, Greg and the ministry Dare to Share have impacted the lives of hundreds of thousands of teenagers across the country, motivating and equipping them to relationally reach out mm. to those who don't know Jesus with the gospel of the message of hope. Greg is well known for his ability to inspire teenagers to action by communicating biblical truth through amazing true life stories and side splitting humor. The ability to connect with teens has made him a nationally known and sought after speaker and author who speaks to the heart of teen issues and helps teens find their significance in God. 
He, we had him on before about a year ago, mm -hmm. and um, I'm just excited for him to come share how last year went and what they have planned for this year. But we wanted to share a video with you that is by Dare to Share. It's called Then What? And it really makes you think about, well, when I'm a kid, when I grow up, then what? Mm -hmm. High school, college, and so on. So enjoy this video called Then What? by Dare to Share Ministries. So you're a teenager. You got your whole life ahead of you, right? What are you gonna do? You're gonna finish high school, right? Then what, go to college? Yeah, maybe, maybe not. Something to start making some money, or at least if you do go to school, you're learning about a profession so you can make money. So you go to college, then what? Get some sweet job, make tons of money. But it's not just about the money, you're gonna fall in love somewhere in there with the perfect person and he will be awesome. You graduate, get a great job, marry your best friend, live the dream, then what? And then you'll get some kids, one or two, maybe eight, then what? Raise those kids, be a good spouse, work hard, get some sweet promotions, then what? You keep plugging away at this life, marry, kids, good job, everything you want. Finally, your kids are grown, they go off to college, they get married, you're happy, you did a great job, then what? You'll probably start thinking about retirement, you work that job a few more years, you retire, then what? You become a grandparent, congratulations! Then what? Hopefully, you stay healthy, strong, the greatest grandparent in the world, spoil those grandkids, and in the perfect world, you and your spouse live to be 100 years old, then one night in your sleep, you both holding hands pass on. The perfect ending to the perfect life. Then what? Well, we want to welcome Greg Steer with us today. So thank you for being back with us again this year. Yes. Glad to be here. <laughs> well, I want you to share with us a little bit about your background for those that don't know you or didn't see you when you were on with us last year. Um, just about your background and what has sparked this passion in you to work with youth and youth evangelism. Yeah, you know, I was a kid raised in the inner city, never knew my biological father. I was a result of a one-night stand, and my family was super violent, kind of like the Sons of Anarchy, just, just fighters and in and out of jail. And I was a little kid uh, raised in this intense home, and a preacher from the suburbs whose nickname was Yankee, even though he spoke with a southern accent, reached out on a dare, reached my toughest uncle with the gospel of Christ. He had never heard the gospel. He put his faith in Christ. This is the same uncle who had been in jail countless times, once for choking two cops unconscious at the same time, who were trying to arrest him on assault charges. All of a sudden, the gospel makes sense. He comes to Christ. He brings 250 people out to church in one month and starts sharing Christ with everybody. And it just it was like a steroid-filled dominoes fell. <laughs> my whole family you know, came to Christ one by one. And I'm a little kid watching all this transformation, thinking to myself, this gospel message can change a family, can, can change a community, can change a city, can change a nation. And I got involved with Yankees Youth Group. He trained and equipped us. He didn't just entertain us. We had games and different things, but he really trained and equipped teenagers to reach teenagers. And we had 800 kids in our youth ministry at one point, 800. There was only 300 adults in the church, but 800 teenagers in the youth ministry, five active gangs, by the way. Um, and he trained us and equipped us to share the gospel. We made and multiplied disciples. And so uh, the vision really came out of that. I actually went to Yankee when I was 15 years old and said, hey, Yankee, why don't we train these other churches in the city how to share the gospel? Because we're already past fire code. You know, we have 800 teens in a room that seats 500. We can't fit anymore. And uh, he was super busy. So I said, well, I'll do it. So I got on the phone started calling churches when I was 15, got a hold of Community Baptist Church. Uh, Clay Stone was a youth pastor. He didn't know me from Adam. And I said, hey, can I come train your students how to share the gospel? We're with this ministry. And uh, he's like, what are you doing Wednesday night? I go, I'm riding my bike there. So I rode my bike there, trained 30, 40 teenagers how to share the gospel. And since then, in a sense, I've been riding my bike all over the nation, all over the world now, training and equipping teenagers 
to share the gospel of Christ. So that's the heartbeat of Dare to Share. We just believe God wants to energize the church, to mobilize youth, to gospelize our world. Well, Greg, we really enjoyed you being on with us last year. Our viewers really enjoyed that program. But tell us a little bit, for those that didn't tune in last year, or we just need to know a little bit about Dare to Share and how it got started. Yeah. So we started in 1991. And I enjoyed being on the show, by the way, last year. It was a blast. Um, started in 1991. I was a pastor in the Denver area and started Dare to Share on the side. And it grew uh, and the church grew. And then on April 20th, 1999, and the Columbine High School shooting took place. And I know a lot of the kids at Columbine knew a lot of the students there. And God really brought my heart for the next generation, so I resigned from the church to do Dare to Share full time. And since '99, I've been full time training and mobilizing teenagers. Primarily for years, it was through uh, two day conferences Friday night and all day Saturday. Uh, we did 185 conferences all across the United States from the Carolinas to Florida to you know, uh, California, train and equip a million teens to share the gospel. We've Got 20 books, countless curriculum, several apps, tools and resources to really mobilize teenagers with the gospel and mobilize youth leaders to train their own teenagers to share the gospel. I think it's, first of all, amazing that at 15 years old, you were passionate enough to see what God did in your own family, that you were 15 going out to train other churches in your city. That is an amazing testimony of what, how God can take any situation once again and turn it around for His glory and our good. So I love hearing that story. What are some of the stories that you've, um, you have to share after seeing teenagers become passionate about the Lord? Oh my goodness. We see teenagers when they're transformed. I mean, I, I, uh, I think a Rachel, a girl that was literally transformed at one of our full, we do a full week training called Lead the Cause. And we do this uh, dramatic reading called Letters from Hell. What if you received a letter from hell from a friend that died without Christ and you never told them? What would they say? And she just began to weep because she began to think of her friend back to Minnesota where she was from. And she helped start this thing called the My Story event at her school where uh, they would invite teenagers to come uh, on a Friday night or Saturday night and in the school auditorium hear their story of transformation. So student after student shared, they had 500 teenagers come out, and I think it was over 120 put their faith in Christ because one girl got this fire for evangelism. And we have countless stories of teenagers reaching teenagers who are reaching more teenagers. And I, I believe it's time. You know, everybody's worried about this next generation. I mean, there's some statistics that are scary. Generation Z, this generation of teenagers, the first post-Christian generation in the history of the United States, according to Barna. Uh, teens are twice as more likely to become atheists or be atheists than adults are. And so the trajectory of the rejection of the historic Christian faith is skyrocketing. And we're using traditional additional strategies to try to close the gap. Well, we're never going to close the gap that way. But the good news is we have the gospel and we have a pattern that's 2000 years old. Uh, and if we implement that strategy, uh, we can close the gap because we can multiply disciples, and teens are ready to do that. And thank the Lord for technology. Everybody's worried about technology. Yeah, there's dangers. But you know what? Uh, there's this Old Testament story when Ben and I yeah, took uh, an Egyptian who was his enemy, his, his spear, and stabbed him with his own spear, right? Well, we can take that technology, that smartphone, and stab Satan with his own weapon by using it yes. to advance the gospel of Christ. And that's what we're trying to do at, at Dare to Share. Well, tell us a little bit how your ministry has changed over the past few years. What are you doing that you weren't doing? Well, our vision is every teen everywhere, hearing the gospel from a friend. And doing these two-day conferences, we begin to realize we've trained a million teens, praise God, over 26 years, but there's 25 million teens in America. So we killed the conferences a couple years back and started Dare to Share Live, which is a live simulcast event from coast to coast. And we did it last year for the first time in 68 cities. And this year we have 99 cities signed up for Dare to Share Live. And so we just believe uh, we're gonna use technology, again, take the spear, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and use it for the glory of God and advancement of his kingdom. So we'll train 
on October 13th, God willing, 25,000 teenagers in one day how to share the gospel and mobilize them to do it. So we're pumped. Well, what are some of the tools that Dare to Share uses to do all this? Yeah, so we have apps, tools, resources. We train teenagers. How do you bring up a gospel conversation? I mean, how do you do it naturally? If somebody Mm -hmm. says, boy, it's hot in here, do you say, it's hot in hell too, let me tell you about it. No, (laughs) you don't do that. That's not a good approach. So what we do is we train teenagers with a three-word kind of opening strategy, ask, admire, admit. So ask a ton of questions, admire what you can about what somebody believes, find areas of agreement, and then admit the reason you're a Christian is you're so messed up you needed Jesus to save you. And then we train them how to share the gospel in a natural conversation. All that's available on our Dare to Share app, free of charge, all of our trainings on it, free of charge. So that's typically how the youth you're seeing this generation share the gospel? Do you think it's through like apps and technology and social media and things like that? I think it's both and. I think we need to uh, train teenagers to use their social media feeds uh, and apps to share the gospel. But I also, I think it's our responsibility as adults to actually train them how to have an actual conversation, right? So at Dare to Share, we do both. We use technology. We have students upload gospel conversation starting videos, but we also train them to have face-to-face, look-in-my-eyes conversations Mm -hmm. with uh, their peers and also with strangers. I think that's great. I've told my son, he's 14, I've told him many times, you know, kids have sent him messages that are just beyond my belief. And I said, Mm -hmm. you know, everyone is so brave behind their device because they're not having face-to-face conversations. I said, that would have not been something ever said to you face-to-face. They wouldn't have had, no. you know, been bold enough to do that. So I think it's awesome that you guys are training these these teens to know how to have actual conversations with one another. And I know it's going to be a great event. We yes. have a video that we want to share with our viewers to let you guys see a little bit about what Dare to Share Live is. Last year was their first time that they did this event, and it was a success. As you've heard, they've got 30 more locations, and this Mm. is something that any church can be a part of all over the nation. But check out this video. It's called Dare to Share Live. Impactful. Encouraging. Invigorating. Inspirational. Upbeating. Amazing. Inspiring. Unique. Awesome. Dope. It's amazing. Like the worship there is top notch and it's really fun and it's interactive and really inspiring. Even if you're not sure, just go to see what it's all about. The worship is great. It's very loud and cool to just jump around and have fun. I've never shared my faith like that before. Like, I'd never done that in my whole entire life. You're with a group of people that truly care and want to help you learn more about Jesus. To see other people and kind of see them that, you know, other people need help and other people need to see Jesus. Rock your city. 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 Well, that video gives you a little bit more knowledge about what Dare to Share Live is and all the youth that are involved and how many youth it's impacting. Um, Now, last year, Greg, was your first year of doing the Dare to Share Live conference. Go ahead and explain to our viewers again, what exactly is Dare to Share Live and what are you trying to do with this event? So we're trying to mobilize a generation with the gospel simultaneously from coast to coast. So it's a live satellite event and it's a little different than your typical satellite event. Normally there's a delay, like a one hour, two hour, depending on which time zone. There's no delay. So it's a 9 a.m. West Coast start, a noon East Coast start. So the teenagers in San Diego are getting the same training at the same time as the students in New York City, right? And we train, equip, and mobilize them all. Why share the gospel? How do you share the gospel? What is the gospel? We're going to have Shane and Shane leading worship. We're going to have the skit guys doing comedy. We're going to have Flame rapping and also preaching, Zane Black, myself. And 
every satellite site has got a worship band. Every satellite site has an MC that's been pre-trained by us. Mm. So the MC is not just giving announcements. They're also training. Mm -hmm. And so it goes back and forth and back and forth. And the reason we did that is because for teenagers, they don't want to watch a bunch of kids in a big room having a party that they're not at. They want to be the party. So we have 99 satellite sites. So we have 99 party sites, you know, where kids are going to get trained, equipped, and then we're going to actually take them out to go door to door, collect canned food for local rescue missions and share the gospel of Christ. Wow. So it's fun. Well, it's intense. What's different about this year compared to last year? Well, this year our theme is totally different and our content's different. Um, our theme is based on Acts 431, where it says, after they prayed, the place where their meeting was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and went out and spoke the word of God boldly. So we have three main points. Number one, we need to rock our buildings with the power of prayer, right? Just like in the early church. Then number two, we're going to rock our lives with the power of the Holy Spirit. And then number three, we're going to rock our cities with the power of the gospel. And so our hashtag is rock your city. And so teenagers are going to be able to have actually a Dare to Share live app. And on that app, um, they'll be able to talk to other teenagers with that rock your city hashtag. And they can scroll down and have, you know, see kind of what's going on mm-hmm. in the different satellite sites and wow. be able to talk to each other because they're getting the same training at the same time. Somebody can put on there, I just led someone to Christ. Here's a video of the person I just led to Christ. Or, hey, I just rededicated my life to the Lord. And you can see it all happening in real time, which is exciting. Well, how does Dare to Share maybe help a student or, or help a youth leader that has a desire to do this? Do you have something that you help them with on this? Yeah, I and mean, we have tons of curriculum and resources. So it's not Dare to Share Live. It's just a rally point, you know, get everybody excited about it and give them some basic training. But then, you know, we need to train youth leaders how to make this part of their week in and week out. We're losing our teenagers because we're trying to keep them with dodgeball and pizza and a short Bible study. Teens are too busy. I have two teens of my own. I cannot believe how busy teens are today. So we need to give them a reason to come and a reason to go. Mm -hmm. And that reason to come to youth group and that reason to go and make disciples is all found in the New Testament. And so we provide tools, resources, curriculum, so youth leaders can keep this going throughout the year. Well, I think you're right in that you you have to touch the heart. Yes. And like you said, dodgeball and pizza and a short Bible study, you're not really reaching the heart. And so when you really teach them the Word of God, because I was telling my husband just yesterday, we were on a walk and I said, how can God not be real? Because when you hear a small thing that He's done, how much joy it fills you up with. So if you guys are imparting into these kids just Mm the Word of God and they're feeling the excitement and what the joy of the Lord really is, then they're going to come back and want more. And so it is, I mean, the games are fun and that's how you get them there and, you know, get them involved. And I love that you guys are going to be doing some fun things, but share with us, like if someone is attending this, what can they expect in that one day? Well, they're going to, you talk about getting the heart, they're going to ride the roller coaster of emotions because we're going to be laughing together because the skit guys are two of the funniest guys on the planet um they're gonna i think weep we're gonna have a dramatic presentation of the gospel um that i believe is going to really make teenagers weep uh over the greatness of salvation um we're going to have training and equipping we're going to train them and equip them how to share the gospel we use a gospel acrostic g-o-s-p-e-l God created us to be with Him. Our sins separate us from God. S is sins cannot be removed by good deeds. P is paying the price for sin. Jesus died and rose again. E is everyone who trusts in Him alone has eternal life. And L is life with Jesus starts now and lasts forever. So it's going to be like exciting and tears and laughter and training. And then we go out. And the great thing about when students go out, a lot of kids are like, oh my goodness, we're going to actually go out and talk to people. It scares them to death, just like it would scare an adult to death. <laughs> right. But it makes you depend on the Holy Spirit. And for the first time, a lot of these students, for the first time in their lives, are really dependent on the Holy Spirit for boldness. And they come back to give testimonies from across the nation. They come back pumped up because they just went out and risked everything to share Christ. Meanwhile, 
they're having gospel conversations on their mobile phone with their friends because we have gospel conversations starting videos that they send out, send out to their friends in their feed. It's really cool. That is awesome. And, you know, I remember as a kid going to the, the youth camp and getting pumped up and fired up, but then I was put back out to go to school and yes. I wasn't trained on, you know, how to be bold and how to walk in that. Or if I was, I was doing it by myself. And so I think it's key that they're going out together and doing that. And that gives them the boldness to when they are just in their own school or with their own friends, to, you know, I've done this and Holy Spirit walked me through it. I can do this again. So I love that. Um, now is Dare to Share just for teens or can anyone attend? It's targeted to teenagers, but anyone can attend. And so I encourage, if you know teenagers, know a youth group, uh, you have teenagers, send them to the closest Dare to Share Live. Just go to daretosharelive.org and click on the closest site near you. Uh, but adults can come too. Matter of fact, the adults come as sponsors. They think it's just the kids are going to get motivated, and they come out like, oh, my goodness, I learned how to share my faith. You know, yeah. And so it's exciting. I encourage too. We are trying to raise up a, an army of prayer warriors, and it's on October 13th, so at 10:13 every day, we all stop and pray. I encourage you to set your phone alarm on your uh, phone to 10:13 and pray for revival on October 13th. Pray for this next generation. You can program a song into there. I put "To Hell with the Devil" by Striper as my song. It's an '80s Christian. Yes, I had their poster artist. in my room. Yes. <laughs> Piper. And uh, and the other 1013 is Living on a Prayer by Bon Jovi. Anyway, um, so 1030 a.m. or p.m., uh, program that alarm and pray with us for revival on October 13th. This nation needs revival. Amen. We are divided. Uh, it is angry politically, racially. There's more and more divisions. It's the gospel of Jesus Christ that can transform everything. And because, because God loves to use the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, wouldn't it make sense that a revival starts with teenagers? Because there's nothing more foolish than a typical American teenager. I got two of them. I can testify. <laughs> well, now you've got to give us details of how the local churches can get involved. How do they go register for this? It's really simple. Just go to the website, daretosharelive.org. That's dare, the number two, daretosharelive.org. Click on the city closest to you, and you can register right there. Wow. Now, is there still time for other churches to become a host for this? Not for this year um, because we're so close to the event. Right. But for next year, definitely. So stay tuned. In the meantime, come out and be a part of right. it so that you can, you and your students can experience it and then say, hey, let's, let's host it next year. Let's be a satellite site next year for Dare to Share Life. Because the goal is to get the churches in your city together. So it's not just designed for one church. It's designed for a community of churches mm -hmm. coming together for the gospel uh, and to mobilize them to share their faith. Amen. Well, I think it's a mm. great work that you're doing, and the Lord is just using you in big ways. And I'm excited to have you back again and hear the testimonies and what the Lord um, does this year with Dare to Share Live. So thank you so yes. much for being with us Thanks. tonight. So exciting. Yes. Yeah, and we're going to go to a song. Marcel Anderson's going to sing more of you. Yeah, I'll stop at fingers like this. That's it. Mm. Yeah. Lord, I need you in my life. Yeah. Woke up this morning, a lot was on my mind. I didn't know who to turn to or to talk to, but I fell down on my knees, praying for your help. Lord, can you hear me and see me? Because I, I need less of me and more of you, Lord. It's all I want, it's all I need And Lord, show me the way And please don't walk away from me Please stay with me Cause life will get me 
much better with you standing by my side I'll trust in your word and put you first when I learn to do better I'll do whatever whatever you ask me and require of me cause I I need less of me and more of you Lord it's all I want it's all I need oh Lord show me the way and please don't walk away from me please stay with me cause I I need less of me and more of you, Lord. It's all I want, it's all I need, oh, Lord. Show me the way, and please don't walk away from me. Please stay with me. Yeah. Everybody wave your hands, yeah. Everybody wave your hands, yeah. If you really want more of God, mm-hmm. cause I I need less of me and more of you, Lord. It's all I want, it's all I need, and Lord, show me. Stay with me, yeah. and Lord, please don't walk away. Don't walk away from me. Yeah, help me sing and sing, Lord. Please, please don't walk away. Don't walk away from me. Yeah. Sing na 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 I need you, Lord, more of you. And everybody help me sing it now. Sing na, that's it, y'all. Na 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 na. Oh, oh, I need you, more of you. Anybody need more? God, sing na. Sing na 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 na. Sing na. I need you, said I need you, Lord, more of you. Everybody, help me sing na na, sing na 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 na. Oh, I need you, more of you, more of you, Lord. Sing less of me and more of you. It's all that I need in my life. Less of me and more of you is all that I need in my life. Mm-hmm. I really need more of you, Lord. I really need more of you. Thank you, Marcel. Love that guy singing. I'm telling you, beautiful job. Uh, and he has, as we talked about earlier, he has a, a, a business or a ministry called Accelerating Men. Yeah, it's for youth ages 10 to 18, mm-hmm. and they just work with um, them and just encouraging them and building them up, and so that they know that their what their identity is in Christ. And he's going to share more about that in our nine o'clock hour. And I know yes. you need to stick around and hear more from him. He has an, just an incredible testimony of one of those things that yeah. Satan could have used to destroy who he was, but right. Marcel chose to have that experience and allow God to use it to change other people's lives. And like lives. I said, it's, it's a little rough to listen to, but it's it, it's going to be something that you're, you need to hear and your children need to yeah. hear too, huh? And it all goes back to Marcel, all the people he's helped since he went through that. And I was just thinking about what we said earlier. Inheritance is what what you give, but legacy, legacy is what, is you, what leave. you leave. We leave a legacy, and that's what we want to do with right. everything we do. And I think that with Marcel and his ministry, 
of what he's doing and what you're going to learn more about is going to leave a legacy for him. And even what Greg Steer, you know, Greg is only doing yes. what he's doing with Dare to Share and his ministry because of the legacy where his uncle came to know <laughs> true, Christ. True. And then he introduced Christ to his whole family. And next thing you know, they had a youth group that blew up to 800 people. He said there was only 300 adults in the church, <laughs> but they had 800 kids. My, my. And so he is now leaving that legacy to his two children right. who are being raised to know Christ. And it just, it's something to be proud of. It's a heritage and something you can pass down for generations and to come. And then it goes back to what we were talking about, the Sloan family and their gatherings and how Mama Sloan got up and that got passed down to, you know, it's going to go from one generation to the next. And, you know, thinking about these, this Dare to Share live event to where all of these teens are coming to be trained mm -hmm. and how to share the gospel. And I think what a and not only to be trained, but also to be ministered to at the same time and have fun as well. And I think about, you know, youth conferences that I went to um, when I was a teenager, I went to something called Ski Invasion. <laughs> and there yes. were times there that I really changed my life. Yes. And, um, you know, even back to a little girl when I went to the Malden Church of God camp, used to look forward to that because I went with my cousins and had yes. such a good time. Right. And, so all those things kind of mold you mm -hmm. into who you are as an adult. Right. And, you know, each time adds a little more and more. And didn't you go to that same camp when you were a little oh, girl? Oh, yeah. When I was a little girl, I went to the same camp, Tony. I got baptized every year. I went Probably to the altar every, every night. <laughs> I was like, I got to get saved again tonight. <laughs> but I remember when I was a teenager, what really affected me and had a great impact on my life is when I went to live with my aunt and uncle, Don and Carolyn Wiggins that pastored a church. And, you know, I'd been saved all my life. I'd get saved. I said, just give me to Sunday night and I'll make it right. I got <laughs> saved every Sunday night. <laughs> but I remember the night that I got there in Gaithersburg, Maryland, going down to that altar because they were in a revival. And I made him Lord of my life. And that was the difference. See, sometimes mm. we do it. We don't do it with our, uh, the good, the right intentions. It's a mind thing instead of a heart Doing thing. Doing the actions yes. instead of the heart. Yeah. And when I, I gave him my life that night, I made him Lord and it changed my life. So there are things in life that do change us. And thank God for people that are there to help us. Yeah. To steer you into the right direction. So I encourage you to go to Dare to Share's website, daretoshare.live.org, and yes. check out if there's a city near you mm. that you can send your kids to <laughs> so that they can, you know, be empowered with the Word of God and allow the Holy Spirit to use them and share the gospel to the people around them. I can't imagine how much time it takes to get all this together, so don't take it for granted. Get right. If there is a city that. near you, definitely yes. check that out. And also, if you don't have somewhere near, but to become someone who's on the, you know, a, as a prayer warrior for them and mark your mm -hmm. timer, like he said, at 1013 for October 13th, put it on your phone to just know, right. even if you take a few minutes every day and just really pray right. and, and cover them um, through prayer in that way, I know that they would appreciate Amen. that. You know, he was talking about statistics with youth and some of them and how crazy they are. And I was reading some statistics myself and, you know, teen substance abuse is bigger than it's ever been and why it's even more important that we really reach out to our youth and get to know them on a deeper level. Um, and it's really no matter how good your kid is or how good you think their friends are, they're still, the enemy is still lurking and right. wanting to put things in their path mm -hmm. that can, you know, change the outcome of what their life is. And I wanted to just, um, one of the things I read was 50% of high school seniors have used illicit drugs or an inhalant mm -hmm. at some point in their life. We're talking about kids 17 years old. And then the National Institute on Drug Abuse, they fund a project that did some studies and this is what they came up with. So among 12th graders in 2017, the drugs that were reported for the use during their lifetime, alcohol 61%, marijuana 45 other illicit drugs 19%, prescription drugs, amphetamines, tranquilizers, LSD, ecstasy, 
I mean, the list goes on, but this is the one that really made my jaw drop. We're eighth graders. Mm. You're talking about 13 and 14 year old kids. Eighth graders in 2017 had tried 23% alcohol, marijuana, 13% of eighth graders. And it goes on, you know, 5% of eighth graders had tried amphetamines and inhalants and ecstasy and even 1.3% cocaine. Mama. I mean, I just couldn't believe this. And you know, the biggest jump of drugs from 2016 to 17 were in eighth graders by 2.6% of just seeing. It's just at their fingertips. You know, they can't drive. They can't, they're not even old enough to get a job in are most places. Are they in places. high school? Well, eighth graders, or no, that's middle school middle typically. School, the last year of middle school. But, you know, they can't drive and they can't work, but they can get their hands on crack and cocaine. <laughs> so it is important as parents for us to educate ourselves and what's going on around our kids and to get involved in what's on their social media, who they're friends with, invite the friends to your house. You know, get to know them, get them involved in events like Dare to Share and this ministry that Marcel's gonna be sharing with in our nine o'clock hour. So I encourage you to continue to watch yes. in that nine o'clock hour. And you had to, some, I, I know, yeah, prayer got requests a, too. Well, I got a scripture, Proverbs 17, 6 says, children's children are a crown to the aged and parents are the pride of their children. Proverbs 22, 6 says, the train of a child in the way it should go, and even when they're old, they won't depart from it. That's true. If you've got a child out there that's gone astray, just look to this scripture and know that you have, you've trained them right, you've taught them right, you've told them, told them about Jesus. Mm -hmm. So now just believe that they're going to be drawn back into where they should be. And stand yeah, on that word. Yes. Uh, we got somebody that wants us to pray for their mother. Somebody's having problems with their eyes, Tony. Uh, somebody's having back problems, stomach problems. And you know, we get a lot of requests in here all through the week. And uh, we just want to pray over those needs, these needs right now. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord, for the privilege of prayer tonight. Thank you, Lord, that we can bring our request to you. And you are a prayer answering God. We agree with uh, the prayer partners that have already prayed over these needs. And we just receive receive it, a healing for every need here. And for those teenagers that have gone astray, we just call them back yes. in tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Amen.